we are starting lunch off today i have little ones monkeys that like to climb on the counter but we are starting off today with lunch making smoothies i'm about to tell y'all why a lot of our church family have the stomach virus not only that we have some schools our, we have a public school and a private school in our town and these children's are throwing up so not only our church family but our public schools and private schools here both have the stomach virus running in them and obviously you know that we homeschool but we are still active in our community obviously in our local church which puts us around people right so a lot of what you see that goes on back here we've talked to y'all before about our outside kitchen garden all goes on right here there is a lot of stuff that i'm about to drop in the smoothies that are from right here strawberries being one of them blueberries being one of them sweet potato leaves are growing down there as well so i will mix that in is, is our superfood that is a green that's packed full of nutrients obviously what our bodies need to keep our immune system up and healthy is nutrients, the correct nutrients from the correct form without going through any kind of process that will change their chemical structure or their chemical makeup. They need to be in their raw, most natural form as possible. Honey is my sweetener to our smoothies, which also comes from the other side of the yard. So what I'm gonna be doing in my smoothie is utilizing things that come right out of our ground that have not been processed, have not been changed. I honestly think we had what's called our first Sunday fellowship at our church. And I think we have already had a touch of the stomach virus that's going around because Jennings was crying, not yesterday, but the day before with his stomach hurting. And I thought, here we go. He's going to be throwing up. I actually sent him to bed with a what? I didn't eat with a towel, but he throws up last night. Yeah, so I sent, I sent Jennings to bed with a towel that night because I was like, he is like crying with his stomach hurt and I guess they're going to be puking all night. But he didn't. He actually didn't puke at all. Um, I think he might have had a touch of the bug, but he did not throw up. Now, last night, of course, you see 90 to nothing. She's been run, running from one side of the porch to the other. <laughs> She's never still. We were actually eating last night and she was on the bench beside me and had stood up and started jumping. And in the middle of her jumping, she threw up. So I thought at first that she might, something might've went out of the back of her throat. And when she went to gag or call for whatever to get that up, the food that she was eating just come up with it. But then after talking to a couple of people from our church this morning, I know there are three families that actively have the stomach virus and a couple of other families whose kids go, one goes to private, one goes to public and friends in their classes were throwing up as well. So I know where we live in our area, the stomach virus is apparently rampant right now. So we might have already had a touch of that, but I am very thankful if that's the worst of it. I am totally fine with that. Our immunes have not been totally beat down, so I think that might be the reason why my kids handled that very fairly well. I don't feed them a lot of chemical, fatty, processed, sugary foods. So if they were exposed to the stomach virus, obviously they were able to fight that off pretty well. Not saying that it was or wasn't. That's just kind of my assumption from knowing that we were around people who are now actively sick with the stomach virus and yesterday too, that we were around Sunday and Jennings with the stomach and Libby throwing up. It just kind of makes sense. So to give them another boost, all of us, them, me, and everybody, for, for lunch is a smoothie. And like I mentioned to y'all, using the things that I grow right here, this is why I feel like it is so important to grow those things, utilize those things, because I'm taking nutrient-dense foods that have all different types of vitamins they're un completely unaltered and we're giving them to our bodies which are going to essentially build up our immune system and that is exactly what we're going to need going into fall and winter is for our immunes to stay boosted because that is going to help us fight off 
all of the respiratory viruses that have going around, the GI stuff that's going around, and all the things in between. Hey, darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. So I just want to show y'all what all we have in our smoothie. So this is some freeze dried mango. I picked up organic. This is our strawberries, our blueberries, our milk, and our honey. Now in there, I also have some freeze dried sweet potato leaves. These come from, of course, our sweet potato leaves. This is Moringa. I have a Moringa tree as well. This is actually called the Miracle Tree. It's like a folk name for it, I guess you could say. And then this is kale. So we grew kale last year. I powdered those leaves. So the green that you see in our smoothie is from all of that. I also added a dash of vanilla. And there's one other thing that I added that I wanna show y'all. This is a master blend of mushrooms. Um, it is vital for immune health. So actually I got this non-GMO organic supplement from this actually come from azure i've really been happy with this it also says it has 250 milligrams of ashwagandha which i really like ashwagandha it's like a um encourages a calm mood so i also added one of these capsules in there too but we're just gonna blend it up and get it in some cups jennings do you like smoothies yeah libby you like smoothies mm. <laughs> So not only do th some of the older kids are like, oh, mama, we don't like smoothies, but really they do. They drink them and the little kids, of course, love them. I cut my finger a while ago, yep. just a little nick, but I'm trying to get it to stop bleeding. Yeah. So I keep using my towel because I was dumping out of one of my jars and didn't realize that the top had a nick in it and it caught my finger. So. We're going to get these smoothies blended. Then I'm going to show you guys after lunch. I'm so excited about this because I have battled weeds growing in my, my beds for so long. I think I'm going to take a whole different approach to specifically one area that's over by the high tunnel. And as soon as we finish lunch, we're going to go outside and I'm going to show y'all what's coming up next. Let's get out. We can leave this city. Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair We can look back someday Baby, don't you understand That we only get one life I wanna make it count on We are about to start our project. Now, this is something that is going to be a slow project because it is obviously a cost that is included in there but I want to show y'all what I'm talking about and why I'm just gonna do this honestly I'm completely embarrassed to show y'all this but I want to show y'all what I'm I'm dealing with what I'm struggling with because I know if I struggle with it I know other people struggle with it too this is my was my strawberry beds it has been a couple of weeks since I've been able to get out and just weed. Weeding, if when I come out and weed, if I weed all three main spots in my backyard, which includes my kitchen garden, which is right behind the house, all of this area right here beside my little greenhouse, and all of this area over here, it literally takes me a day, sometimes a day and a half. I'm about to show y'all my other spot that I'm talking about that is incredible. Oh, it looks like some deer has been visiting my sweet potatoes. Y'all see that? The leaves taken off the top. That looks like we've had some deer friends out here. So I'm gonna have to watch my sweet potatoes now. But this is the other thing I wanted to show y'all. And, and I have brought the camera out here. I've brought y'all out here with me before. While I have spent, I mean, this literally sometimes takes me an hour or more just to come through and get the grass. So if I, for any reason, neglect this, this is what I got right here. And it it's bad. It has been weeks since I've been back here just because we've kicked off school. And when we kick off school, we kick off extracurricular activities, including piano, cross country, things like that. And I just don't have hours to come weed my bed. So I want to show y'all what I'm talking about. 
Look at this. This was all strawberry rose and it is completely overtaken. I actually don't even know what these little things are right here, but they have just literally overtaken my beds. So I have drawn the line. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of dealing with this. I'm just, I'm just sharing with y'all honestly. So I told Colby, I can't do this anymore. That I'm, I'm getting older, obviously. And with each passing year for me to crawl on my hands and knees becomes a little bit more challenging. So I wanna show y'all, I actually have a couple of these already and I really, really like them. These raised beds that are being overtaken by my sweet potatoes. You can see a clip of one right there. And then this one right here that is behind my lemongrass and peach tree. So I already have two of those and I really, really like them. They are small and easy to work. Of course, I have my bigger ones up there where I have grass problems around them on the ground, but they are built up and I don't have to deal with as much grass with them being above the weed eating mowing area. It is much more easy to work and garden areas that are above the ground when especially when you're talking about here in south mississippi because grass is uncontrollable now on my bed back here of course you can see i have sweet potatoes taken over i need to get my old tomatoes down the marigolds and basil will stay for a little while i've shown y'all before that my areas of this is all thai ginger i have another area of sweet potatoes an elderberry tree lemongrass a kiss me under the garden flower for the bees and a couple other things in the back but anytime i'm not constantly weeding the grass is constantly growing so i almost feel like i'm rowing against the current and i just you know the older i get i just can't function like that so i told colby what i want to slowly start doing is on some of my tarped areas that i already have start going up so i found a company that has some really nice quality beds that are going to allow me to go up now the thing that i really like about these beds the most is that they're not wood i've had those beds for dude i thought that was a bug on my leg are you getting me with the grass in a big piece so the thing i really like about those is they're not wood i don't have to worry about them rottening so that is a major plus because I feel like wood just nowadays, it just doesn't hold up. So looking for other options, this is kind of where we landed. And I'm gonna show you, Aiden and I are about to construct what I have. I'm gonna kind of show you where we're gonna put that, how we're gonna make it kind of a Hugo culture style bed. And as soon as we start our fall starts, we will be growing in these. We will be growing in my other ones. And everything that I do this fall will be above the ground, y'all, because I cannot battle the grass anymore. So let's get started. So we had a hang up in yesterday and we weren't able to get to the bed. So today we are. Now this is one bed. You can actually set it up in nine different shapes. This is Vigo garden is where i got my raised bed from this time this bed i will put together it is just going to be pretty plain and simple but it is going to do exactly what i need to be done which is what i talked to y'all about specifically yesterday and how i am just i'm done battling the grass i'm really i really want to do all of my backyard area either in pots above ground raised bed type ways because i just cannot control the way the grass grows and takes over everything i've pretty well lost all of those strawberry beds i don't know if i will ever get those back because grass i mean literally just in the matter of weeks completely took over and just demolished they just it just took over everything we will slowly be adding these raised beds all over our areas all over our tarp that we have laid down so that we are not constantly spending our time weeding and fighting grass I'm just over it. So we're about to get this thing put together. I'm going to move it out where I want it. Now there are options. Some of them come with options for arches where you can do arch trellis systems with them. 
Today, I'm just going to be putting my bed together. But if you guys are interested in anything like this, I will attach the link to this company where you guys can get on and just kind of see what they have, what they have to offer. I know for me in my years of doing gardening and work around outside, I just, I'm fed up with the grass. I'm tired of spending my time pulling grass up out of the ground. I'm going to be filling the bottom with sticks and leaves, compost, sticks and stuff are go in the bottom. We're gonna build our soil on top of that. You know, I'm not ready for fall planting quite yet because it is still really hot here and it is still really dry here. So in the next week or two, we're gonna be starting our seed starts, but obviously those won't go into our raised beds even for a couple of more weeks after that. But I have time today to get my raised bed put together. So we're gonna jump in and get this thing put together and move to where I want it. Every time you're away, I long for you so much I can find my way. Aiden, what would you say that took us about 30 minutes to put together two of us? About 20, 25. About 20 minutes, 20, 25. So it really wasn't that bad. Y'all can kind of see the feel of it, of Livy standing in the middle. So about how big it is. The one thing that I want to do today is get it set and get sticks and leaves and such in the bottom. Now, I don't have access to the tractor today and Colby is at work, so I won't be able to get dirt in here. Like I told you earlier, it's okay because I'm not ready to put my fall stuff in there right now. I have other beds that I have to amend. You scored. He threw paper across and it landed in the box. We'll start calling you TT. Tyler Tony from Dude Perfect, okay? If y'all watch Dude Perfect, y'all get that. If not, it's okay, but y'all check out their channel because they're huge and they're awesome. They have amazing family content. But anyway, back to the gardens. I have some other soil that I need to amend of beds that we have slowly been working on raising our beds because of grass issues. So the other beds that I already have wet raised that we really started last year with really raising these beds, I need to start amending that soil. So that's what I'm gonna be working on today. Even if you had a very small place that you wanted to take up that was bigger than something like five gallon buckets or whatever, this is definitely a great option. And like I mentioned to y'all, instead of packing this thing full of soil, think about the Hugo Culture style beds where you can layer the wood, layer the leaves, pine straw, whatever that looks like. Things that you can just literally gather from the ground for free that are gonna naturally compost and break down in there and ultimately actually feed your plants as they break down. And you're not out paying so much for soil to try to fill it up. So that also helps with the cost there. But if you're interested in something like that, y'all be sure to check out my pinned comment as well as leave a link in the description. And if y'all have any questions, feel free to let me know. I am excited about this. I really am because I need to get my stuff up off the ground. I'm battling grass so bad. And this is my main goal. It will be a slow process. Of course, I wish I could just go fill my whole backyard up with these, but obviously I can't. It's just a step-by-step -step process. So I already have two. I'm adding another one. Uh, you uh, guys already seen our new wooden raised beds that we added in last year. So we are slowly getting there. It is a slow work in process because there is cost to it. And when you're doing things like this, it's not cost effective to say, I'm gonna turn my whole backyard into raised beds. You just can't do that. It's just one step at a time. So here we are with one step, another one down. So I'm excited to be able to get this field and go in from here. I remember when you get on there, this is not the only size. There's a bunch of different sizes. You can make them a bunch of different shapes. There are different heights and everything. There are different systems, attachments. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Thank y'all for being with us. Happy homesteading, y'all.